Okay, so uh, download Blender. The link will be below. And uh, this is not going to be a complete course in using Blender. This is just going to be in order to extract the uh, doodly text with a transparent background. So what we want to do is we want to go to Node Editor and that will bring up this screen. Now we just need to set it up and we need to go to uh, Compositing Display. Then we want to use Nodes, Backdrop and Auto Render. Okay, so this is now the current node on the left is the render node. We're not actually going to be using that, so we're probably just going to disconnect that. And you disconnect nodes by uh, grabbing the node, obviously, from the other end and just disconnecting it, and it no longer is attached. Okay, so let's just pop that off to the side. What we want to do now is we want to add a movie, and the movie is going to be the doodly file that we had uh, created and that we want to remove the, that we want to make transparent. Okay, so we just position this somewhere. These nodes get terribly messy. Open, and then we want to navigate to our doodly, our pre-prepared doodly file. And where is it? The documents and doodly, do 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 doodly, there, there we go. And tutorial there we go so we double click it well we open clip and now we need to uh, add a output so we add an output viewer and this lets us see what we're doing without actually rendering the final thing so we can see that as soon as we connect that the backdrop becomes white and if we scroll where the mouse is down the bottom, we can uh, go to different frames and we can see what's happening per frame on each frame. So that's the advantage of using the viewer node. So next thing we want to do is we want to add a chroma key. So we're going to uh, use this to actually take out the white bit. Okay. So we know we don't. We want the da, 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 da. we want it. Okay, first we're going to invert. Okay, now by dropping it in between a node, it'll automatically uh, join it. So as you can see, I drop that between the node, and so we can either drop it in between, or we can actually attach the outputs as we're doing with the uh, invert. We can attach the and no, this is not the one we need to use, is it? So, okay, that's a mistake. So hit delete, delete that one. We actually need the keying node up the top. There we go. So again, instead of just dropping it in and having it automatically do it for us, let's do it the old fashioned way. So using the scroll on the mouse, we can zoom out, grab the output from the invert, put it to the image on the input, then take the image from the output and connect it to the image and it doesn't work. So why isn't that working? Okay, yes, no. What we need to do is we actually need to attach that to the alpha. And there we go. So as you can see, it's actually removed the white, the white background. Okay, there is one slight issue here. And that is, we need to attach it to the uh, composite node. And that means that when we, when we render it, we'll actually see what it looks like. Okay. Now, the problem is, is that it's not scaled to the proper dimensions. So uh, to get out of that, we hit escape and we're going to insert another node that is going to resize the output from the movie node. So that's going to be in store. Where is scale? Somewhere? No, maybe it's in filter. Uh, no, it's not. Wait, just, ah, it's up the top. There we go. Bang. Okay, so let's just drop it in the side. Uh, in there. Nah, let's do it the hard way. So we attach the output to the input and the output to the input. Okay. There we go. So now we need to change from relative to actually render size because we've set up the render size. Uh, so when now when we render render the image, 
click that one. There we have, and that's the way that it, it should look. So we hit escape to get out of that. Uh, let's get rid of that because we no longer need the actual scene. Let's just reposition things. So let's just go through this all again. So we start with a movie clip. We scale it. We invert the color. We apply a key, a mat, I guess you'd say, and then we drop it to the composite. Uh, viewer is optionally optional. Now what we need to do is set our render preset. So I've set it to 10, uh, 90, 20 by 1080 frame rate, 24 per second, 24 frames per second, is which is what uh, my original doodly file was set at. And now we need to set the output directory. So uh, scroll this, let's go to recent and tutorial and let's create a new folder, create a new folder and there we go. So what will happen is the it'll create image sequences of PNGs. Okay, and we just want to check that. Yep, PNG and we want to make sure that it's uh, color format is RGBA, that the A stands for an alpha, which basically is going to give it a transparent background. So it'll be black, transparent background, crank up the compression to 100%. Okay, so now when we click, now what we want to do is when we scroll, we, oh, we need to make sure that the end, so at the moment we are set, the ending is set to 250, frame 250 which is 24 seconds, it's gonna be a bit over 10 seconds. So what we need to do is we need to find out when the end of our doodly video is. So I probably should have checked this earlier, but we can just do a bracketing procedure to try and find out where it ends. No, uh, let's try there, no. Ah, too far, so it's gonna be somewhere back. Not far enough. Not far enough. Ah, there we go. So that's going to be a little bit forward from that. And too far. Bingo. So it goes for frame 624 is the thing. So pressing E, okay, or we can just type that in at the end frame. So the for uh, 624. Okay, so this means that it when we go to render, it'll render frames one to 624. So we go render, render animation, and this will render all the things to things. So, but this is gonna take forever. So let's, uh, let's just pause the video. Okay, so we're in the last frame. Uh, let's escape out of the rendering. So that's all being rendered to the uh, aforementioned directory called image sequence, whatever. Okay. Now, what we can do is that's all ready to be dropped into our video editor of choice. So I happen to use uh, Blender as my video editor as well. You can use whatever you want. Again, this is not a course in Blender. This is just showing you the basics. So if you want to use Blender, go to video editor and that will bring up the video editing screen thing of Blender. Uh, I like to do a, make a few adjustments. Uh, just to make it a bit more friendly and we change this to properties and my mouse has been difficult so let's just switch to keyboard uh, there we go properties okay so that's our properties panel, pan, panel let's bring that across here there we go so uh, what we want to do now and this will be applicable to most uh, non-linear editors or video editors, whatever you want to call them. We need to make sure that the frame start frame is number one. Yes, that, so then when we add the, now we're going to add the image strip. So the images that we just recently rendered, so double click there, select all, I push A, we'll select all, and then add image strip. And that basically adds all the images as, a, as if they were a video. So what we can do is move this up a little bit. And as you can see, as we sort of scrub through, we also need to set it to alpha over, which basically means that any video or image put underneath it will 
be shown through. So let's add a let's add a movie file. Okay, add a movie movie file. And where are we? We've got that we go. So this is one I just took on my camera phone device, whatever it is. And now when we scrub through, you'll see that we have the movie underneath the transparent doodly file. So cooking with gas. So hopefully this has been informative. As I said, it's not actually a crash course in Blender. It's just how to achieve this effect using Blender and Doodly. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully it's been informative and enjoy.